we got a viewer request via email. Uh, I love doing viewer request episodes. Now, I'm going to have to check to be sure, but I think this is the first viewer request episode we've uh, done so far this year, which is kind of sad when I think about it. But I like this one. It's an easy one, so let's talk about it. The question was, what is the difference between heißen und nennen in German? This is a good one. Uh, both of these verbs in German translate to English as to call. Uh, what we're talking about here is naming stuff. We're talking about naming a person, place, or thing. For example, this place is called Bragg Creek. My YouTube channel is called Lernen und Fahren. Okay, great. In German, we have two verbs for this purpose, nennen und heißen. And they are expressed slightly differently. Let's talk about it. Uh, in German, one of the very first questions you learn how to ask is Wie heißt das auf Deutsch? Literally, what is this called in German? For example, let's say I don't know the word for glove. I hold up a glove and I point to it and I say to a German person Wie heißt das auf Deutsch? What is this called in German? A German person could answer and say Das ist ein Handschuh. The German word for glove is literally Handschuh, a shoe that you put on your hand. I kind of don't like that word, but okay. When you meet someone for the first time in German, you can ask them Wie heißt du? Actually, if you're meeting someone for the first time, you should probably use the uh, polite formal form. You should say, wie heißen sie? Literally, what are you called? You're asking them for their name. Uh, okay. If you've really been paying attention so far, you may note that all of the English translations so far use the verb to call in its past tense form. This place is called. My YouTube channel is called. Uh, what is this thing called? Why are we saying called past tense? Well, it's subtle, but we're speaking in passive voice. What is passive voice? I refer you to the episode we did on passive voice a long time ago. This is a very long episode. I apologize for the length of it, but passive voice is very complicated in English and German, and it takes a long time to explain. Let's try to sum it up here. Very basically, the difference between heißen und nennen is that heißen requires two pieces of information. Number one, the person, place, or thing that is being named. And number two, the name that we use with that person, place, or thing. For example, er heißt Heinrich. He's called Heinrich. Okay. Nennen, by contrast, requires three pieces of information. We require the person, place, or thing that is doing the naming. Let's call that the subject, or more accurately, in a passive voice sentence, the agent of the sentence. We also require a direct accusative object that is the person, place, or thing that is being named. And thirdly, we require the name itself. Okay, for example, Ich nenne ihn Heinrich. I call him Heinrich. And now finally in English we can see that we're using the verb to call uh, normally in the uh, active voice that is. I call him Heinrich. Why did we switch from passive voice to active voice there? It's because the sentence now has an agent, the person, place, or thing that is doing the naming. Uh, if we have that in English, we can use active voice. So, uh, in German, they differentiate between these two usages by switching between heißen und nennen. In English, we differentiate between these two usages by switching between passive voice and active voice. We can contrive a sentence... What a lovely little pond. We can contrive a sentence in both languages uh, that shows both usages in the same sentence, in two different clauses. It looks like this. Er heißt Reginald, aber seine Freunde nennen ihn Reg. Pay close attention to the English uh, sentence there. We've got uh, the verb call showing up in past tense in that first clause, passive voice, because there's no agent there. Who calls him Reginald? Well, uh, everybody calls him Reginald. That's his name. It doesn't matter who calls him Reginald. It's another way of saying his name is Reginald. He's called Reginald. We omit the agent from that clause, and so in English we use passive voice. In German they use heißen. But look at the second clause now. In English, we are in active voice. Why? Because the agent's there. Seine Freunde nennen ihn Reg. His friends call him Reg. We've got three, we've got those three pieces of information there. We've got the agent, his friends. We've got the direct accusative object in the form of the object pronoun ihn, him. And we've got the name. Seine Freunde nennen ihn Reg. Active voice in English, nennen in German. Uh, another example. Ich nenne meinen YouTube-Kanal Lernen und Fahren. I call my YouTube channel Lernen und Fahren. We've got the agent, we've got the object, the thing being named, and we've got the name. Therefore, in English, active voice, in German, nennen. Another way to say that in both languages would be to say, my YouTube channel is called Lernen und Fahren. 
In English, we switch back to passive voice because now the agent is missing. Who calls it that? Well, uh, everybody calls it that. That's the name of it. Uh, in German, we switch back to Heisen. Okay. So, uh, there's definitely overlap between these verbs in German, but they're not perfectly interchangeable. If you held up a glove in German and pointed at it and said, Wie nennt das auf Deutsch? Uh, that's wrong. Okay, it's, it's clear what you meant, it's clear what you're asking there in the context of physically holding something up and pointing at it and saying, Wie nennt das auf Deutsch? It's literally what you're saying is, what call this in German? Uh, it's clear what you're asking, but uh, that's grammatically incorrect. We're using nennen incorrectly there. It should be wie heißt das auf Deutsch. Now, <laughs> now, I apologize for this, but let me throw a wrench into the works by pointing out that we can blur the line between heißen und nennen by using the word man in German. For example, I hold up a glove, I point to it, and I say, wie nennt man das auf Deutsch? That is perfectly correct. But why? Our previous example, wie nennt das auf Deutsch, is wrong. Why is wie nennt man das auf Deutsch correct? Because we're technically adding the agent here. The word man in German translates to English as one, but that's very rarely used in English. Literally what you're saying is, what does one call this in German? To my ears, that sounds very formal, very stuffy, very old fashioned. Uh, I probably wouldn't say that. In modern English, it's more common to use the word they. Hold up a glove, point to it, and say, what do they call this in German? Who's they? Well, you know, they. Just in an abstract way, they. What do they call this? What is this called in German is what you're really asking there. Uh, but even though the agent there is very ill-defined, we're saying man in German, or one, or they in English, it's not a specific uh, person or a group of people, it's just, you know, they. What do they call this? It's, it's, it's enough. From a grammatical standpoint, it's enough. That sentence technically has an agent, and we can switch in English to active voice. What do they call this in German? And in German, we can switch from heißen to nennen. Wie nennt man das auf Deutsch? It works. So, uh, the confusion between these two words is perfectly understandable. That was not a stupid question that you asked. Now, since we're already out here, and since we're already on the subject of the verb to call in English, let's have a little bonus section here at the end of the video. Let's talk about a cheesy joke that only works in English. Uh, it hinges on the fact that the verb to call in English is a bit ambiguous. You can use it to mean, uh, to name something, in which case it translates to German as heißen or nennen, as we've just discussed. But, uh, we have another use of the verb to call in English, and that is in the context of, like, calling someone on the phone or calling out to someone. In German that would be rufen oder anrufen. Uh, so here's the joke. You're at a party, it's late at night, people are getting ready to go home, you go up to somebody and you say to them, uh, hey, may I call you a taxi? And they say, yeah, sure. So you say, okay, you're a taxi. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say it was a good joke. The joke only works because the verb call is ambiguous in English. If you were to try to translate that joke to German, it would make no sense. If you went up to somebody and said, hey, darf ich dich ein Taxi rufen? And they say, aber klar doch. Okay, du bist dein Taxi. That makes absolutely no sense because it's a completely different verb in German. The joke only works in English. So, uh, that'll do it for today. Thank you for sending in that request. I love doing viewer request episodes. Normally, I would uh, do the little spiel here about if you've got a request that you'd like to see covered on this episode, then please send it in, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to do that today because, guys, we're into September. It's still mostly green out here. It's actually quite nice and warm today, but the days are getting noticeably shorter and it's getting a little bit nippier. Uh, I don't know how many good riding days we have left in this season, unfortunately. So, uh, if you do have a request, you better get it in quickly because I don't know how many more episodes we've got coming uh, this summer. I hate to end on a down note like that, but that's it for today. We will see you next time on Landon und Fahren. Yeah.